So it's the dawn of week two in the FTC decode season, and it's time to come up with a plan for the week. So for build team, your primary goal is to build up a, I'm Coach Pratt, and I've been teaching robotics design for over a decade now. Uh, I have taught FTC teams and mentored them up to winning national championships and multiple Inspire Awards. And this is part of my 12-week series, 12-week plan on how you can find success in the FTC decode season. By the end of the day, you should have a plan uh, that you can have a clear direction for what you need to do for this week, setting yourself up during your team meetings. And if you can follow this 12-week plan all the way uh, up to your first competition, I can guarantee you that you're going to find a lot more success than had you not done any plan at all. Because if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Now, a quick note on today, anything that I'm mentioning in here uh, is all suggestions of what you should be doing this week. It's not designed to be uh, followed exactly to a T. Your timeline may be shorter. It may be a little bit longer, depending on what season you're in. So you should be able to take this full timeline and adapt it to your own team's needs. Think of this as a sort of heaven to strive for that you can sort for out an ideal. So let's hop into it. This whole timeline here is set up down below. You can find a link and make a copy of itself. So we're at the dawn of week two, and the whole purpose for today is to build your prototype and your programming chassis. So I'm going to separate this into build team needs, programming needs, and then your outreach team needs. So for build team, your primary goal is to build up a complete drivetrain chassis for your programming bot and then finish off that robot in 24 hours. If you remember, at the end of week one, you should have hopefully had a working prototype, whether it was working off of one of the starter robots from Gobilda, Studica, Rev, or Antimark, or whether you made a starting robot of your own. Uh, so if you have not done that yet, that should be step number one, is be able to build yourself a prototyping robot that you can build off of. You should have, either really early this week, something that can at least score some points inside of the game. If you don't have that, that's your first priority. The faster you can get a robot up and going, the more likely you have time to be able to iterate things over. If you can, I like to run a few different chassis with my teams. One chassis where the builders are working on, and one chassis that the programmers are working on. So if you're just starting out, having a chassis that is either mechanism drive or tank drive that your programmers can work on and be able to work through things like pathing, autonomous pathing, um, some really simple mechanisms to be able to draw that up, that's really, really useful. So build team, primary goal is to finish off that quick prototype bot and then start working on the chassis that your programmers can be using to be able to start getting some pathing practice down. Once you're done assembling that first uh, prototype, and that first functioning robot, you can build team, you can start working through some of your designs and prototypes. You really want to focus on low fidelity for your key mechanisms right now. You have things like your intake, things like your flywheel shooter, things like your base lifting, things like your drivetrain, things like an indexer. Now's the time to break down what are the most important things you'd be doing. One of the best ways to get points this season is be able to shoot. So the first thing, in my opinion, you should be focusing on is getting a ball shooter that can grab humans to drop things into your hopper. So that should be priority number one. Try to get some sort of ball shooter method, be it a flywheel mechanism, be it a sort of catapult type mechanism, be it a sort of linkage or a hammer press, whatever you were using from that brainstorm ideation last time, now is the time to grab that cardboard, grab those thin sheets of plastic, grab those pre-made parts, grab quick 3D printed prototypes, and start testing these things out to see what ideas start to hold salt and what ideas don't. The best ideas that win are typically simple ideas, simple modular designs that have been iterated over time. So you don't want to be reinventing the wheel every single time. Try to iterate over your design. So that's your goal for this week is build a whole bunch of quick prototypes and see what things are working, see what things aren't. See if it's functional enough for what it is that you need. Once you have something that's functioning, Go ahead and move on to that next prototype. For programming, you, of course, need to help your build team assemble that programming chassis. So once you've got that set up, now you can start getting some critical understanding of how pathing works, how you can drive a robot around, how you can have simple mechanisms set up as classes and things like that. You can start with some basic autonomous pathing uh, once you have that robot out. So it's, and you can also start programming some of those simple mechanisms that your builders did for that quick robot in 30 hours or robot in 24 hours or that first prototype robot you can also be for working on getting that functional set your drivers have some time to be practicing driving a robot around you're definitely going to need more driver practice this season 
especially because defense is a really huge play. For your outreach team, now's the time to start your social media updates. Think about the story that you want to share with teams. You have an audience. Who is your audience? Is it other FTC teams? Is it robotics enthusiasts? Is it coaches? Is it mentors? Is it general population? Thinking about who you are creating content for is going to shape how you create that content. If, for instance, if your content is elementary school students, you're trying to do some sort of outreach uh, for these students, you may uh, not add in as many memes. You may bring down the vocabulary you're using a little bit. If your audience is other high school teams, you might up your meme potential, get things a little bit more lit inside your points. You don't want to have a place where you don't have enough riz that other students don't think you're doing something cool. Uh, So share some of those out on your social media to keep on track on who your audience is going to be for this week. You can start drafting up some initial emails to be able to send things out to potential sponsors. And then you can also start some uh, plans for any sort of long-term community engagement. If you remember this year, the awards have shifted quite a bit. So there is now the Reach Award, which is trying to reach out into that local community. And there's also the Sustain Award. So let's talk a little bit about this because your team has the best planning chance for this. Taking a look at the Reach Award, this is introducing more people into FIRST. So this is effectively your how well you're going on the community and sharing out these ideas. And uh, trying to share people about the ideas of FIRST, maybe starting a FIRST LEGO League or helping with a FIRST LEGO League team, helping with another FTC team, helping with some STEM experience out in the way. But this is pretty part to embrace the FIRST culture. Not necessarily FIRST, but they're really talking about recruiting new people into FIRST and introducing new people into FIRST as well. So how many new team members you got this year? Seems to be a big one. Have you been able to start up another team? Have you been able to mentor another team in another area? Now's a good time to start building up that platform so that you can get more people into this. Now, in the past, this Motivate Award used to be a little more about getting people in the STEM community, but it looks like first transitioning a bit to really thinking about how are people getting into the first ecosystem itself. So keep that in mind when you're doing your planning there. On the Sustain Award, This is a little bit of a shift because it is how is your team going to stay sustainable from year on year on year? My guess is that the fact that FIRST is at 32,000-ish numbers now, 33,000 numbers for active teams. Well, not active, but for the number of teams. But there are, the last time that I'm aware, between eight to 10,000 active teams, which means there's about a 66% dropout rate or about 60-ish dropout rate on the number of teams that we have so the sustain award seems to be aiming on how can you make your team more sustainable over time to make sure that it continues to grow and continues going to this one of these big ones is that you uh, discuss and plan your team sustainability and uh, your team goals and how you're going to move towards your own goals Uh, and uh, this is a big one for your own personal growth. How are you growing as a person? I believe that's another award, not the Innovate Award. It is the Connect Award, which is how are you going to be developing your team's goals and the steps you're going to take to do those goals. Because this is an award that requires you to have a season-long plan, now's a good time for the outreach team to start talking to team members and say, what are your goals for this season? What is it you want to learn? What kind of things do you want to improve? You can start documenting this journey over time. Because if you're on the outreach, you're not as focused on building the robot itself, it's a great time for you to be able to help documenting these skills to be able to show off those awards. And you are a critical part of your robotics team to be able to set that up. I hope that gives you a pretty good plan for what it is you should be doing this week. Let me know in the comments down below what kind of things you were able to accomplish last week and what kind of cool creative mechanisms you may have come up with on your robot. As well, make sure you check out this week's FTC Fridays for past robots and some of the cool things I've seen. And then if you think you've got a cool creative mechanism you want other people to be able to see, fill out the form down below and I might feature your robot on the next FTC Fridays. Other than that, best of luck out there this week. I'll see you next Sunday for our next plan for starting the week three into the decode season. And best of luck on your robot this season.